Hello there, Mr. Sutton bringing you the BC Calculus 8-2 Extra Practice number 2 solutions on arc length. For this problem, we want to set up an integral to find the length of this curve over this interval and then evaluate it. So to do this, we're going to need the derivative of y, dy over dx, which is going to be 2x, just using the power rule. And now for our integral, we have the integral from negative 1 to 2 of the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared, all of that with a dx. So let's do this on the calculator now. So here's what this looks like on the calculator. I've got my integral. Make sure you put that 2x in a parentheses before squaring it. Press enter. And that comes out to about 6.126. To find the arc length of this parametric curve, I'm going to need to take the derivatives of both x and y with respect to t. So for dx over dt, we've got, going from left to right here, negative 8 sine of t. Plus, this is going to be, ooh, we're going to need a, a product rule here. Um, so we have u prime v plus uv prime. Um, so that would be 8 sine of t. And then we're going to have, let's see, we would be doing 8t times the derivative of sine. So that would be plus 8t cosine of t. And these sine of t's are going to cancel out, leaving us with just 8t times the cosine of t. Let's do dy over dt now. So we've got, this will be uh, 8 cosine of t instead of 8 sine of t. And now we have another product rule going on. And both products are going to have to get subtracted. So we're going to have a negative 8. Well, actually, it'll, it'll be positive um, for this first one here. You've got negative 8t derivative times cosine of t. So this is going to be negative 8 times, well, just cosine of t. That's going to be negative 8 cosine. Yep. OK. And then uh, we've also got, let's see here, negative 8t times the cosine of t which is going to be positive 8t sine of t. There we go. These cosines in the beginning cancel. So this is just 8t sine of t. And now that I've got those derivatives, all I need to do is take the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the square root of dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared dt. I'm going to use the calculator for this piece of it. Just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to enter dx over dt and dy over dt as y1 and y2. And then quitting out of there, I'll just do math 9 for my integral. We've got 0 to pi over 2. And now I'm going to do the square root of, I need dy over dt, or dx over dt squared. So alpha trace y1, square that, plus... And now for dy over dt squared, I have alpha trace y2, and I'll square that. And we'll just uh, do x for my d there. Even though these are all with respect to time, your calculator's fine as long as you're consistent with your variables on the calculator. So that's 9 point, let's see, I guess 870 if I round it to three decimals. On this one, I'm trying to set up an integral and evaluate to find the length of this curve. So let me find my derivative. Uh, this is going to be dx over dy, since we're taking the derivative of x with respect to y. And that's going to end up be, let's see here, using the power rule, we're going to have just y plus 1. So now I have to take the integral from negative 1 to 3 of the square root of 1 plus dx over dy squared. And then dy is going to be our differential here. So that's the integral. Let me plug this into the calculator. So here's what I entered in my calculator. I had uh, my integral from negative 1 to 3, square root of 1 plus, and instead of using y everywhere, I used x everywhere. My calculator's fine with that, as long as you're consistent with your variables. And x as a dummy variable does the same thing as a y with a dummy variable. Um, so pressing enter on all that, we get about 9.294 for the final answer. On this problem, they want an integral and then the actual value of the length of this curve. So first, let me get my derivative, dy over dx. That's going to be secant squared of x. And now for the uh, integral, I have the integral from negative pi over 3 to 0 
of square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared dx. And now let me just do all that on the calculator. So here's what I'm plugging in my calculator. I have my integral from negative pi over 3 to 0. I've got square root of, we've got 1 plus, and now to do secant squared squared, well secant squared is really uh, cosine to the negative 2, because secant is really cosine to the negative 1. So here's the, the secant squared, is cosine of x, close the parentheses, and then put an exponent of negative 2 there. But now I have to square that whole thing, because that's all dy over dx. Put a dx at the end here, press enter. Hope for the best. That's about 2.057 for the length of that curve. On this problem, we're given a parametric curve with these components, and we want to find the length of this curve over the interval from 0 to 3. Okay, so let's first start by getting the derivatives of each of these. So for x prime, we have basically uh, 3 halves times 1 third, which is going to be 1 half. So we have a 1 half times 2t plus 3 to the 1 half power. But don't forget to multiply by the derivative of 2t plus 3, so times 2 for the chain rule there, which I can all simplify to, let's see here, 1 half and 2 cancel. So this is just the square root of 2t plus 3. Now for y prime, we have 1 plus t, if I do 2 times 1 half, and then decrease that exponent. So at this point, it's time to use the integral. So I've got the integral from 0 to 3 of the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared, and we'll have a dt for the differential. Let me plug all this in now. To make this a little bit less clunky, I'm going to enter my x prime as y1 and my y prime as y2. And then just getting out of there, let me take my integral. So math 9 from 0 to 3. And I'll do the square root of now for x prime, I'm going to do alpha trace y1, because that's where I stored that. Don't forget to square it. Plus, we have a y prime. That's going to be alpha trace y2. And don't forget to square that. And I'll just use x for my differential, because that's what I always use on the calculator. Press Enter. That's about 10.5. On this one, we're trying to set up an integral and then find the length of this curve here, this parametric curve. So first, let me get x prime and y prime. x prime is going to be 3 cosine of t, and y prime is going to be negative 3 sine of t. So my integral, then, is going to be uh, the integral from 0 to pi of square root of uh, x prime squared plus y prime squared dt. Let me do that on the calculator now. To make things a little bit easier to input, I'm going to put my x prime and my y prime as y1 and y2, respectively. And then quitting out of there, let me do math 9 for my integral. We're going from 0 to pi. And let's see, there's pi. Now I have to do square root of, and for x prime squared, I've got alpha trace. Whoops, wrong one. Alpha trace, there we go. y1 squared plus alpha trace y2, and square that. And we'll do a dx over here, because I always use x. And that comes out to 9.425, which uh, is actually 3 pi if you were to do this out the long way. But hey, they said you could use a calculator. For this problem, I'm trying to set up an integral and then evaluate it to find the length of this curve over from negative 3 to positive 3 for x. So let me start by getting my derivative. If I think of this as basically 1 half e to the x plus 1 half e to the negative x, I can write the derivative as 1 half e to the x minus 1 half e to the negative x. And now my integral, I'm going to go from negative 3 to 3. And inside, I'm going to have the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared. And I'll have a dx for my differential at the end. So it's time for the calculator to work its magic. To make this a little bit less clunky on the calculator, I've entered my dy over dx as y1 in my y equals. Now let me quit out of there, and I'll do math 9 for integral. We're going from negative 3 to positive 3. And I'm going to be doing square root of, we've got 1 
plus I need a dy over dx squared, so alpha trace y1, because that's where I stored dy over dx. Don't forget to square it. Put a dx in there, because that's what I always use. And press enter to get about 20.036. For this calculator-based free response, we have research on a boat investigating plankton cells in a sea, and at a depth of h meters, density of plankton cells, which is in millions of cells per cubic meter, is going to be modeled by this p of h function. And this is valid between 0 and 30 for uh, h, and again, h is measured in meters. So our input is meters, our output is plankton density, which is millions of cells per cubic meter. Um, so some interesting units going on in this one. So let's see here. Our continuous function, f, that models uh, basically this stuff happening after 30 is not given explicitly. But I'm sure they'll make us talk about it later on anyway. So given that setup, our first task is to find p prime of 25 and then explain what we just found. So we're going to just do that on the calculator. So my first step is going to be to enter p of h as my y1 on the calculator and then quit out of there. Now, since they've already given me what th this p of h here, I can just do p prime of 25 on the calculator without actually showing what the derivative of p looks like algebraically because I'm just taking the derivative at a single spot. So to do that, let me do math 8 and I'll do dx. For my function, I'll use alpha trace y1, because that's where I stored p of h, which is what I want to take the derivative of. And I'm evaluating this at 25, so x equals 25 here. Press Enter. Comes out to about negative 1.179. OK, great. So what did we just find? So we can say, based off of this uh, thing that we just wrote here, that at 25, and let's see, the input here was meters. So at 25 meters, the density of plankton, which is what uh, the original function, p of h, is giving us, that is changing at a rate of negative 1.179. And now the units on this, well, the units of p was millions of cells per cubic meter. And we just differentiated that with respect to uh, h, which is meters. So this is now going to be a rate of millions of cells per cubic meter per meter. For this part of the problem, they're asking us to consider a vertical column of water in the sea with a horizontal cross section of three square meters. To the nearest million, how many plankton cells are in this column of water between heights zero and 30 meters? Okay. So uh, for this one, we basically have to take this, this uh, density here, which is in units of millions of cells per cubic meter, and we have to use this over the course of like a 30-foot, is this meter, 30-meter column of water. Now, that means we're going to need an integral since you're essentially adding a bunch of these different densities together to get the total amount of plankton. So we're going to need an integral from 0 to 30. But if we just take the integral of p of h by itself, well, kind of uh, the unwritten assumption here is that this is just going to give us a 1 square foot area of plankton. If we want this 3 square foot cross section, we're going to have to do 3 times p of h dh. And if you just think about the units involved, eventually you want to end up with millions of plankton cells. Right now, pH by itself gives you uh, millions of cells per cubic meter. So if you want to end up with millions of cells, you need to find a way to cancel out cubic meters inside the integral. The dH by itself, this is just going to give you uh, meters that you're multiplying by, because that's what H is measured in, is meters. But that doesn't get rid of cubic meters. To get rid of cubic meters, you need more. You need square meters as well, and that's being supplied by this three square meters area here. All right, so it's time to just integrate this on the calculator. So here's what this looks like on my calculator. Notice from before that I had my uh, p of h function entered as y1, so I can do math 9, integral 0 to 30, 3 times alpha trace y1. And I'll do a dx here, because that's what I'm using as my input variable on the calculator. Press Enter. And this comes out to 1,000, 
675.415, and that's going to be in units of millions of plankton cells. For this problem part now, we have a function u such that the f function that describes the uh, density of plankton cells after 30 meters, well, apparently that is somewhere between 0 and u for all values 30 or greater. Great. They also told us that the integral of this u function from 30 to infinity is 105. And they're also giving us this fact that the column of water in part b that we found the, uh, the, the amount of plankton cells in, they're saying, hey, that's k meters deep, where k is greater than 30. So we want an expression that gives the uh, number of plankton cells in the entire column. So in part b, we only figured out the number of plankton cells in the first 30 meters. Um, so this part now, they want an expression for everything. And then they want us to explain why the number of plankton cells in this column is less than or equal to 2,000 million, because we're not actually going to be able to find the exact value. We're going to have to kind of estimate this. So let me come up with a little bit of a function here. I'm going to call uh, the number of plankton cells for k meters, I'm going to call that big P of k. So it's not quite the same as this P of h function here. Um, so this is going to equal the, the 30 meters worth of stuff that you found in part b. So again, that integral was 0 to 30 of 3 p, a, p of h dh. But now to get the rest of the plankton cells, we have to integrate a function that takes us from 30 meters on down, and that is this f of h function up here. Uh, this gives us the density after 30 meters. So we're going to have to do plus integral from 30 to k, because again, k is how far down things go. So from 30 to k of and then we'll do 3 times f of h dh. So at this point, they want us to explain why this number, whatever this is, has to be less than or equal to 2,000 million. Um, we don't actually have to find the exact value of this. They just said they want us to write an expression involving one or more integrals that gives the number of plankton cells, and we've done that. But we have to show that this is less than 2,000, 2,000 million to be precise. So we already found the value of this first integral in part b. That, again, was 1,675.415 that we rounded off. But now we need to talk about this other integral. So this one's a little bit trickier um, because we don't know what the, the, the f function actually does. The continuous function f is not explicitly given. So we have to estimate that. And that's where this u function is going to come in. They've told us that the f function, whatever it is, is always going to be between 0 and u of h. So at the very least, this is, this is going to be no less than 0. I mean, I guess you couldn't have negative millions of plankton cells anyway. Um, but we kind of want an upper bound on this, because we want to show that all of this stuff is less than or equal to 2,000. So what's the highest that this integral could actually be? Well, it can't be any higher than u. And they told us that the integral from 30 to infinity, which would certainly cover the integral from 30 to k, the integral of u is 105. So what I'm going to do here, because I don't want just the integral of, of uh, f of h, I want the integral of 3 f of h, I'm going to do, I'm going to add this to 3 times the integral of u from 30 to infinity. So this should give me an upper bound on what the number of plankton cells in the whole column is going to be. And again, they told us that this integral from zero, from 30 to infinity was 105, or at least the, the integral of that was. Um, so this is really 1675.415 1, plus 3 times 105. Let me run that number on the calculator to see exactly what that comes out to. So crunching those numbers, we end up with 1,990.415. And here's the key part to ending this problem. Um, this number is less than or equal to 2,000. So this demonstrates what they wanted us to here, which was that the number of plankton cells in the column is less than or equal to 2,000. 2,000 million. For this last part, this boat is moving on the surface of the sea. And at time zero, position of the boat or time greater than or equal to zero, position of the boat is given by x and y of t, which they're not telling us, but they are telling us x prime and y prime of t. 
So basically, we want to find the total distance traveled by the boat over the interval from time one to time, or time zero to time one. So this is just essentially a, a total arc length kind of problem. We just need the square root, we just need the integral from zero to one of the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared, just using our parametric arc length formula here. Um, just make sure you put a dt as the differential, because this is all with respect to time. And since they already gave you x prime and y prime, you don't need to rewrite those. You can use those names. At this point, we're just going to plug this into the calculator. To make this a little bit less ugly on the calculator, I've gone back to my y equals. And in y2, I've entered my x prime. In y3, I've entered my y prime, so that I can easily plug those in. And now, quitting out of there, I'm going to do my integral, math 9, from 0 to 1. And in here, I'm going to do the square root. Oops, square root. Let's try that again. There we go. Of, I need x prime squared, so that's alpha trace. And now I'm going to do y2, because that's where I stored x prime, and square that, plus alpha trace y3, because that's where I stored y prime, and then go ahead and square that. And I'm going to use dx, because that's my input variable. Even though it says t here, I'm using x consistently on the calculator. So press Enter. And that comes out to, drum roll please. Well, that boat's taking a while. There we go, 757.456. And that's going to be in meters.